Hey everybody, Brian Tracy here, President of Sagamore Spirit, presenting to you from my little COVID cave office. Thank you for giving us the opportunity during these unique times to present to you virtually. The history of distilling in Maryland is a great one, a story a lot of folks don't know. It goes back to the 15, 1600s when we were predominantly distilling rum. And then due to taxes and tariffs on sugars and molasses, in the early 1700s, we switched over to grain-based products like rye whiskey. And from there, Maryland became famous for Maryland-style rye. We continue to flourish through the 1700s, and we rolled into the Whiskey Rebellion that forced families out of Maryland, families such as Mary and Jacob Beam and Basil Hayden. That's right, the Beam family was distilling in Maryland before moving to Kentucky. And shortly after the Whiskey Rebellion, the Mid-Atlantic flourished with distilling. And Maryland was one of the leaders, and Maryland-style rye became famous for being superior quality. And in 1910, Maryland had 44 distilleries, all making rye whiskey. We kept making it right through Prohibition. It's one of the reasons we're called the Free State. And then it switched over to ethanol production to help support World War II, and never made much of a comeback after that. And our last distillery closed its doors in their early 80s and sold that name off to Heaven Hill, and that's Pikesville Rye. Even the Kentucky distilleries wanted a piece of that Maryland heritage, that Maryland-style rye. For decades, no one in Maryland was making whiskey and yet the identity and the brand of Maryland style rye lived on. It says a lot about the style and the flavor profiles of this whiskey. And Sagamore saw that as a great opportunity to bring back Maryland style rye whiskey. And that's our sole focus to this day. Our mission statement is simple. It's to inspire a global passion for Maryland rye whiskey. And since opening our world-class distillery in downtown Baltimore on a five acre waterfront property, our teams worked hard every single day to craft exceptional experiences and whiskeys. Our 50-time award-winning brand has gained national and international attention. We know people are excited to toast the original American whiskey. The American whiskey story is much bigger than bourbon, and we're here to tell it. Hi, everyone. My name is Ryan Norwood. I'm the Director of Operations here at Sagamore Spirit. Thanks for joining me. Uh, sorry I can't be there in person, but this is the next best thing. I'm going to uh, take the next couple minutes to walk you through our core products as well as our reserve series and give you a little bit of tasting notes and a little bit of background on what we're doing here. So the first product that I'm going to talk to you about is our Sagamore Signature 83 Proof. The concept behind this was to make a very drinkable, approachable rye whiskey. When we decided to make this whiskey, we used two separate mash bills. We use a high rye mash bill that consists of 95% rye, 5% malted barley, and we use a low rye mash bill that's 52% rye, 5% malted barley, and 43% corn. That corn's gonna add a nice sweetness to that spice that you're gonna get. Both these mash bills are cooked, fermented, distilled, and aged completely separately. After that aging period of about four plus years, we then take those whiskeys, we dump them, and we blend them together in a proprietary blend that makes our signature 83. One of the things I'm gonna do next is walk you through our tasting notes. First thing that I do whenever I taste whiskey is I look at the visual, the color of it, the clarity of it. On our 83, you're gonna see a nice golden straw color. It should be very clear and bright and leave some pretty nice legs around the outside of your glass. Next thing that I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go in and take a quick sniff of it and get the aroma and talk a little bit about the aroma. Big things that I pick up on the aroma here is I get some nice vanilla, some caramel, I also get some of those baking spices. I get some nutmeg, some cinnamon. Uh, the aroma is really subtle, uh, which is what we were going for, like I said, for that drinkable, approachable rye. After I've done the visual and the aroma, last thing I'm gonna do is taste it. The flavor on the 83 should be very well balanced. You're gonna get a little bit of like citrus, kind of like a candied orange peel. You're also gonna get those baking spices, that nutmeg, the cinnamon come through really nicely and then a little hint of that vanilla and some of those caramels that's actually gonna come from the barrel. But again, it is a very drinkable, very approachable rye whiskey. Next product that I'm gonna to talk to you about is our cast strength rye whiskey. This is comprised of the same mash bill that we use in our 83. It just has a little bit of our natural spring water added to it to soften it up a little bit. Again, when I'm doing this tasting, I'm gonna walk through those same things. I'm gonna look at our visual first. The visual on this one's gonna be a little bit darker. It's gonna be more of a a golden amber, a little bit of a straw color to it. Again, it's gonna be bright, clear sample. 
I'll go in and smell it a little bit. So the aromas on this should be a little bit more intense than what you saw in the 83. We're gonna see a lot of those baking spices coming through again. A little bit nutty as well. Cinnamon, the nutmeg, a little bit of clove in there. And then there's gonna be just a hint of that sweetness that comes from that low rye mash bill that can come across fruity, almost like a little bit of that orange peel or even pear I've gotten out of this. Last thing I'm gonna do is taste it. Again, that flavor is going to be very well balanced. It's going to contain those baking spices. There's going to be caramel, vanilla. For 112.2 proof, it comes across very, very drinkable, very approachable, and, and something that I can definitely go back to again. The next product that I'm going to talk to you about is our Sagamore Spirit Double Oak Rye Whiskey. With the Double Oak Rye Whiskey, this was a really fun one for us to, to play around with. And it started out with our same mash bill that we use for the Signature 83 and the cast strength. But this time what we did was we actually took that whiskey, we dumped it, blended it together, and then we put it back into uh, Wave Stave barrels, new American oak barrels that have a number one char on them. So a Wave Stave is where they've gone and they've actually cut grooves lengthwise in the staves. What this does is it increases surface area and allows for a lot more of that whiskey to touch the oak. What this has done for us is it's made a very well balanced, rich toasted oak flavor into our whiskey. It spends about a year plus in those extra wave state barrels. Same thing, I'm gonna walk you through our tasting again, starting with the visual. You can tell on this one, the visual is gonna be a little bit darker. It's gonna be a little bit more of that golden uh, amber, darker amber color coming out of it. Again, it's gonna be bright and clear. Going for the aroma. The aroma has that so same baking spices that come through but there's also some really nice citrus. There's a little bit of fruitiness that comes through on it, and then some of those toasted coconut, toasted nut flavors that come through from the wood. Last, I'm gonna taste it. Again, it's really, really well balanced, very drinkable. It comes across with a lot of like toasted coconut. I get some hazelnut, a little bit of pecan, so you can tell that's really toasty. Uh, a lot of that is gonna come from that barrel. It comes through really, really well. Uh, it finishes very smooth, especially for a 96.6 proof whiskey. Next thing that I'm gonna to talk to you about is our Sagamore Reserve Series. These are our limited time offerings that are split up into three separate categories. We have a Vintner Select, which is finished in wine barrels. We have a Brewer Select, which is finished in beer barrels. And we have a Distiller Select that's finished in X Spirits barrels. One of the ones you may remember from our Vintner Select is our Port Finish. We were fortunate enough to win best rye whiskey in the world at the San Francisco Spirits Competition. I'm gonna walk you through our Calvados finish, which is part of our Distiller Select Series. It's our base rye whiskey aged in ex Calvados barrels. Calvados is a French apple brandy from the north of France. And so visually, when you look at it, it has almost like a burnished oak color to it. It's, it's that dark amber color. Again, it's gonna be very clear, bright sample. You go in for the aroma. There's, you can kind of get that fresh apple, that, that honeycomb aroma coming off of it. It's, it's subtle, but it's there, and you also get some of those baking spices that are gonna come in from the rye. Let's go in for a taste. The flavor has a really nice apple uh, on the front. It's like an apple crisp. I also get some of that honeycomb coming through. A lot of those baked spices, that nutmeg, cinnamon, come through from the rye, and it ends with almost like a little bit of like a beeswax flavor. It's, it's again, very approachable, very smooth. And, and something that I could go back to and, and drink again. Thank you all for joining me today. I appreciate your time and walking through our product line. Hi, I'm Chad Albertson with the marketing team, and I'm here today to talk to you about our Barrel Select program. It's all about the barrel. When an account participates in our Barrel Select program, they choose a unique Maryland-style blend of over six-year-old rye whiskey. It's our oldest product on the market. We use our single barrel of 95% high rye mash bill and expertly blend it using 20% juice from our 52% mid rye mash bill. We then take that whiskey and break it down to 110 proof using spring fed water from the historic Sagam farm located 22 miles north of Baltimore. Now an account can get either 34 six packs or 17. It's completely up to them. We love it when accounts come to visit us to do the selection at our five acre waterfront distillery and they can even tour the farm. But if they can't make it, no worries. We'll ship the samples out and you can do it in market. We can even do it virtually online. Now, no two expressions are ever gonna be the same. So your account is guaranteed a one of a kind product. In a copy and paste world, our Barrel Select program offers both independence and individuality. Find your flavor, shared spirit. Cheers. 
Everybody, I'd like to say thank you for taking the time and giving us the chance to present to you. I want to leave you with three takeaways. One, Maryland was the birthplace of the original American whiskey, rye whiskey, 158 years before Kentucky ever made bourbon. Two, the rye category is a hot, explosive category. And Maryland style rye is unique and approachable and really versatile when it comes to cocktail making. Three, the consumer's looking for a unique, authentic story. And our 50 time award winning brand fits just that niche. Thanks again and cheers. Hi everyone, uh, Jack Shute here from Sagamore Spirit. Uh, I hope you enjoyed the uh, the video with Brian Tracy, our co-founder and president, and uh, Ryan Norwood, our uh, uh, director of operations, our head distiller, uh, kind of a guy behind the magic of the brand, um, and uh, here to answer any questions that you might have. Um, again, we're a fairly young brand, four years old out of Baltimore, Maryland, and um, you know we focus strictly uh, on rye whiskey, trying to bring. Uh, the, a lost history back to the forefront of American distillation. Um, you know, Maryland was uh, making whiskey 150 year, years before Kentucky was even a state in the union. Um, so uh, we're doing everything we can to bring that history back and uh, put Maryland back uh, at the rightful place of uh, leading distilling of rye whiskey in the U.S. So um, any questions uh, from anyone? Um, you can, uh, you know, uh, submit your question in the uh, box to the right where it says Q&A. Um, and then those questions will be fed to me immediately. And uh, happy to answer anything that uh, any of you might have. All right, so while some, while some questions come in, I figure I'll take the opportunity. Um, Brian um, spoke to you briefly about um, our reserve series, uh, which will we call our uh, Vintner Select, our Distiller Select, and our Brewer Select, which are our uh, rye whiskey is finished in uh, used barrels of some sort, whether it's beer, whether it's, uh, Ryan mentioned the Calvados finish and our port finish, which won world's best rye whiskey at the San Francisco Spirits competition in 2019. Um, but our most current release um, uh, that we have that just came out recently, actually came out in September or this month, depending on the market, um, is probably our most unique whiskey that we've uh, we've come out with. We, we tasked our distilling team to come up with something, um, you know, unique, different, outside of the box, something never done before. Um, and uh, it took a long time for us to finish it. Um, uh, but uh, we just released our, what we call our distiller select Manhattan finish, um, which it's not a ready to drink. It's not a cocktail in a bottle. Um, it is a 103 proof uh, deconstructed Manhattan at 103 proof. Um, so what we did with that whiskey is we, uh, for all intents and purposes, we, uh, we made three different batches of rye whiskey. Um, so over here, we took our four and a half year old rye and we uh, put it in freshly dumped used uh, Fee Brothers bitters barrels. Um, over here, we had about 30 barrels of freshly dumped uh, cherry brandy barrels from Reinhold Distillery in uh, downtown Chicago, a really cool craft distillery in Chicago where we got a bunch of barrel aged cherry ba brandy barrels. We put four and a half year old rye whiskey in those barrels. And then we got a bunch of barrels, uh, uh, barrel aged sweet vermouth barrels uh, from a distillery up in Maine um, that we put our four and a half year old rye in. So after about a year and nine months of finishing our rye whiskey in those barrels, we, uh, we uh, blended them together. Um, a lot of time went on to figuring out the right blend, um, and, uh, and we blended them together to come up with our 103 proof version of a Manhattan flavored whiskey. So by no means is this a cocktail in a bottle, by no means is it a fireball, um, or a screwball, which obviously, obviously those brands do very well, but this is a sipping whiskey, uh, can be made well with cocktails, but I highly recommend one ice cube, um, uh, and let it dilute a little bit. And it's a, a beautiful fall whiskey for this time of year with the weather cooling down a little bit. Um, so that's now on the shelves now out there. You should be able to find that in your, your local liquor stores, total wines nationally, um, you know, in, in New York, all your big stores like park Avenue liquors, warehouse wine and spirits, um, uh, and, and a slew of other stores out there. So we do have a question that came in. Um, a question says, how much do you distill 
yearly. So um, we are the largest distillery on the East Coast. Um, the only waterfront, as far as we know, the only waterfront distillery in the United States. Um, and we are running our 40 foot copper column still um, with two doublers, uh, you know, 24 hours a day, seven days a week. So we are um, distilling a lot. Um, the exact amount, um, I'm not uh, 100% sure of, but, you know, I'm going to say from what I know, it's about 30 to 30, 30 to 40 barrels a day that we're filling. Um, so, you know, we've got the capacity for 70,000 barrels at our rickhouses. Um, by no means are those rickhouses filled yet. We got a long way to go um, before we fill up 70,000 barrels worth, uh, worth of uh, space. Um, but um, yes, we are, we're distilling at a, at a very rapid capacity. We're distilling for the future, even though we're a young, small brand right now. Um, you know, we, uh, we, uh, we got a lot of room for growth. We've got a lot of inventory. So we, like many distillers, we don't have to worry about the, uh, you know, inventory issues. Um, um, we don't have out of stock issues, except for obviously our, our uh, yearly releases, which are really meant to go in and out. They're in limited quantity, high allocation, like the port finish and the Calvados finish and the Manhattan finish. Um, but our signature 83 proof, our double oak and our cash strength are, that Ryan mentioned in the video are our three core whiskeys that you should be able to find locally in, in each and every market that we operate in. Uh, another question that came in is what is the future of Sagamore? The future is, uh, the future is rye. Um, that's all we focus on. We uh, are fortunate enough that you know, we, uh, we didn't have to, um, not that anything's wrong with it because it just depends on the distillery. Um, we didn't want to come out with a vodka and or a gin or, uh, you know, cordials or vermouths um, that didn't require aging to kind of keep us uh, going in those early stages. We, um, you know, it took us four years to, uh, from when we got our distillate um, to aging um, before we launched that first bottle back in 2016. 2016. Um, and then our distillery doors opened um, um, in uh, 2017. Um, so that kind of brings up the question of, uh, you know, do you source? Um, and the question and the answer, the, you know, the technical answer is no, we haven't sourced, you know, whiskey. There's a difference between sourcing whiskey and contract distilling. We contract distilled uh, for a short period of time while we were building our distillery. So we utilized um, MGP, which we've been very transparent about, which is in Indiana, which a lot of big brands use, brands like Bullet, brands like High West, um, uh, Templeton, a lot of brands utilize MGP in Indiana to kind of uh, get them going while their distillery is being built. Um, and then at some point, hopefully in the future, you move over to your, uh, your, your home distillate. So we did use MGP as a, as a contract distiller, meaning that we used our proprietary mash bills. Um, for all intents and purposes, they gave us a still to use. We used our uh, distillate. Um, we um, used in our barrels. We aged it ourselves. Um, and we, uh, we stopped purchasing um, new make uh, distillate from MGP um, as soon as our distillery doors opened in April 2017. So um, we've had enough inventory from MGP to get us through those three and a half, four years. And we will be start to move into our own Maryland distillate as early as uh, spring of 2021. So, you know, call it six, seven months from now, Maryland juice will be in the bottle. We're really excited about that. Um, you know, we, we like our distill, we like our blends. We like our mash bills that we were uh, distilling through MGP. Um, so there's not going to be a huge difference, um, but uh, um, you know, there will be some, for people who have a discerning palate, who know their whiskeys, who have a, have a, have good taste buds when it comes to whiskey profiles. Um, you know, you might be able to tell a difference. We're hoping ours is better. Um, and we're pretty sure ours will be because we're making sure of it as far as we're concerned. Um, but you know, come April, May of 2021, we'll start seeing some Maryland discipline there. Uh, big, quick question, which is my favorite Sagamore rye? Um, you know, just like anyone who works for a brand, they're all my children and I love them all equally, but it depends on, a, you know, a, a, my mood, the time of the year, what I'm eating. Um, but when it comes down to, um, you know, from our three core whiskeys, um, the double oak is really, really unique. When we go to these big events like Whiskey Fest, um, you know, in Thirst Boston and um, all the big whiskey events that go on around the country. And you'll see us, one of our employees sitting there tasting all of our whiskeys. The one that people come back for is the double oak. It's really unique. It's really different. There's not a lot of, there's a lot of double oak bourbons out there, but there's not a lot of double oak rise. And you're definitely not seeing a lot of double oak whiskeys out there that are using that, that wave stave technology where we put, um, you know, grooves on the inside of every stave of the barrel. So it almost looks like a, a Ruffles potato chip 
on the inside completely around the interior of the barrel. So the whiskey seat gets more contact with the surface area of the oak, gets these really nice caramelized sugars, almost like a candied oak flavor to it. Um, so it's like, you know, cinnamon Christmas candy oak uh, with a little oak to it. So it's um, really unique whiskey. Um, so it's hard for me to say what my favorite is, but I was actually a really big fan of our um, reserve series release that came out last fall. So a year ago today, pretty much, we came out with our cognac finish rye whiskey, um, which was finished in uh, freshly dumped 50-year-old Remy Martin con XO cognac casks um, for about eight, uh, about eight, nine, little over nine months. Um, that one was really unique. I'm a cognac guy. I love cognac as well as, as well as whiskeys. Um, but, um, that was the one that was a really unique, uh, whiskey. And if you can find that on the shelf, I highly recommend you picking it up, um, because it's, uh, it's, it's something special. Um, so I touched on source because that was a question that came up. Another question, um, you know, why is, uh, you mentioned, uh, we mentioned the water, um, that, uh, especially Chad, our, our, uh, trade marketing manager mentioned that we, we get all of our water from our, um, 530 acre thoroughbred horse racing farm called Sagamore Farm, which is really where we get our name from. Sagamore Spirit, um, is from Sagamore Farm. Um, the founder and owner of our distillery also owns one of the top 10 horse racing teams in the country, Sagamore Racing. Um, and many of our thoroughbred uh, racehorses are born, trained, born, bred and trained at Sagamore Farm, one of the premier horse racing farms in the country, about 22 miles north of Baltimore from the distillery. Um, and that's where we source all of our water. Um, you know, I've been to probably 100 different distilleries in my career. Um, and, uh, you know, most distilleries really talk about the water, um, and how important that is, but I've never actually seen where the water comes from, um, which that's really cool. That that's something unique about Sagamore Spirit and really got me excited when I started working for them. This was a real place that we get our water from. It's a spring house on that, on that 530 acre thoroughbred horse racing farm, um, that was built in 1909 by the university of Maryland to study the effects of uh, the spring water that's coming up through that um, through that property, and the reason why that property is so important, and which in which is why we're using it for proof to proof down our rye whiskey, is that it happens to sit on the largest limestone aquifer in the Mid Atlantic United States, and and the reason why that's important is because that's the perfect style of water for proofing down whiskey. That's why bourbon is made in Bourbon County, Kentucky because Bourbon County, Kentucky sits on the largest limestone aquifer, the largest limestone shelf in the, middle, in the, in the United States. And um, the reason why the limestone shelves are so important because as the water um, you know, filters through that limestone shelf, not only does it strip out all the impurities and the iron, you really want iron-free water for proofing down whiskey because, you know, natural distillate that comes off of the stills is already kind of, you know, got that metallic iron, um, you know, um, flavors to it. So you really don't want more iron flavors uh, imparted into the whiskey. Um, so not only does it strip all the impurities and the iron out of the water, but just as importantly, it enriches it with calcium. Um, limestone is, uh, aquifers are highly dense in calcium. And as that water picks up that calcium content, it gives it a nice creamy texture to the water. And, um, you know, just, it, it's perfect for that style of, uh, a uh, perfect style of water for proofing down whiskey with that creamy texture, that calcium rich textured water. Um, so water, it, it's, it'd be really unfortunate to age a whiskey for five to 10 to 20 years. And then, you know, uh, and then proof it down with, you know, water that, doesn't live up to the quality of the whiskey. So you got to have the perfect style of water for proofing down whiskey to make the best quality um, American whiskeys. Um, another question, what would you recommend to a new distiller trying to start up? Wow, that's a, a really great question. And I, and I wish I wish Ryan uh, was on um, was on this call to answer that because he's come from the brewing side and now he's been uh, managing Sagamore Spirit distilling operations for, you know, call it uh, four or five years now. Um, but, you know, coming from uh, from what I know and my experience, um, you know, is uh, I call it good or bad. Capital is always um, something that you you're looking for. Um, good equipment, um, patience. Obviously, uh, you know, aging whiskey requires patience. And um, if you want to do it the right way, it takes time. Um, uh, but, you know, I, I don't come from that side, so I'm not really on the distilling team. So it's hard for me to answer that. Um, but it's uh, it's uh, it's I know it's, um, you know, it's a science, as we all know. And um, it takes time and it takes practice and it takes trial and error to come up with the exact profiles that you want. Um, uh, 
And uh, that's uh, any other questions from anyone? Uh, again, you can submit it to the right side of your screen. Um, we are now open um, as of last week. We have been open for tastings, but we weren't doing full tours of the distillery just because of uh, you know COVID and making sure we're keeping everyone inside the distillery and people coming in uh, safe and, and healthy. Um, but, you know, we've got our protocols in place. We're doing it the right way. Um, it's been, it's an important thing for us um, to make sure we're keeping everyone um, safe internally and people who come in. Um, but if you're in the Baltimore area, you're more than welcome to come check us out. You can go to sagmorespirit.com and, and book your tours online. Um, so, um, but one thing that's been really fun and unique, um, well, I guess not really fun and it's been unique. Um, and it was so, somewhat fun to learn a, a new, you know, almost a new trade for our distilling team. Um, you know, back in the early days of, uh, you know, when the pandemic started, um, a lot of the distillers were coming out and saying, Hey, we're going to make, you know, hand sanitizer. We're going to convert our production to make hand sanitizer. Um, and it was something, it was, a, it was a conscious effort. Um, it was a conscious decision that we made um, at, uh, at Sagamore um, to not do that. You know, our, our distilling equipment was brand new. Um, it, uh, it, we had just uh, brought it in. We just started using it just uh, three and a half years ago. Um, so we, we really weren't in the position to, uh, to want to do something like that. But as soon as we made that decision, um, we got a call from Johns Hopkins uh, a hospital network, which is one of the largest hospital networks in the uh, United States, and they're based out of Maryland. Um, they called up our uh, our president Brian Tracy and said, "Hey, um, we're going to run out of hand sanitizer in three weeks." And this was in you know early April. Um, we're going to run out of hand sanitizer in three weeks. So um, you know when you get that call and you you hear the uh, the the stress and the anxiety and the the nervousness from from some of the top doctors in the nation. Um, you, you have to do your part. There's there's just no there's no there's there, there was it, there was no um, you know meetings to be had. There was no decisions to be made. It was an on the spot said absolutely. What can we do? FYI, we have no idea how to do that. Um, we just you know really started getting to know our equipment you know uh, perfectly with what we do now. Um, and so to convert that to complete hand sanitizer production is something that is completely over our head. Um, you know, what can you do to help? The next day they brought in about a half a dozen of their, um, you know, top lab technicians. Um, and uh, within a week, they, uh, they could, uh, completely converted the, dist uh, the distillery over to uh, full hand sanitizer production. So, you know, right there, that's our um, that's our, uh, our head distiller and our uh, VP of operations, Ryan Norwood, with some of the team from Johns Hopkins. Um, and in a quick week, uh, we, uh, we converted over all our production and we did it for up until about mid-July. Um, 24 hours a day, seven days a week, we were making hand sanitizer, providing it to the hospital networks, um, uh, providing it to consumers, to uh, retailers that were in need. Um, uh, and to, you know, multiple hospitals around the area, really anyone who was, uh, you know, in a, in a tough spot and, and, uh, and needed it. So, um, this is, uh, this is exactly what, um, what our, uh, I'll tell you, show you right now. Um, some of the product that we, uh, packaging, even for our bottle, for those of you who have seen our bottles is important. So packaging for our hand sanitizer was equally as important for us. So we had it and it's still, if you go to our website, sagmorespirit.com, it's still available for sale. Um, you're more than welcome to order it. We ship it to all 50 states. Um, and, uh, you know, my wife who in here in North Jersey is a, an ER physician um, uh, in North Jersey. Uh, she's, she's personally told me it's some of her, the best sanitizer. She, she brings it to work every day. She loves it. It's not that kind of gooey, sticky, slimy hand sanitizer. It's very liquidy pump spray, really easy to use. Um, and it actually has a little bit of that kind of ethanol, corn ethanol, um, you know, white dog, uh, you know, uh, um, smell to it. So, um, you know, that's available. Obviously, we've, we've, we're fully back into distilling um, uh, whiskey at this point as of um, as of mid-July. Um, and hopefully we don't have to go back to that. You know, we, we did that to fill a gap in the pipeline of hand sanitizer. And now we're back into whiskey. So um, um, any other questions uh, from anyone coming in? Um, uh, I'm trying to think if there's anything else that I want to bring up to you. Again, if you're in Baltimore, um, and if you're in Baltimore uh, as well, we do have our, our sister property, which is our hotel, 
um, uh, which uh, is a Sagamore Pendry Hotel, uh, which is in uh, Fells Point in downtown Baltimore on the waterfront of Fells Point. Um, it's the old uh, kind of Rikers Island of, um, of New York, the old uh, uh, where immigration came in through Baltimore. Um, very old building that uh, we converted into a state of the art, modern, beautiful hotel from the Pendry Montage Group, which uh, many of you might have heard of before. Uh, there's a Pendry in San Diego. There's one opening up in New York. Um, I think there's one open in Miami, Chicago, Montage in Deer Valley Park City. So the Sagamore Pendry is a part of that group. Um, Condé Nast uh, mag, uh, Publications named it the number one new hotel in the world. And Travel and Leisure Magazine in 2019 named it the number, uh, number one hotel in the country. So if you're in Baltimore, if you're in the area, um, come check us out. Um, come check out the distillery. Um, and a quick question here, and it's a great question. Any plans getting Sagamore Spirit Rye more widely available in Europe? The answer is yes. Uh, we are available in the UK. Um, uh, you know, there are other uh, Euro uh, European markets that we in. So we do have a um, European distributor network um, or distribution network that is um, so we are available. Um, I'm not 100% sure you can um, email to info at sagamorespirit.com um, if you're interested, um, and it will direct us to our international team. Um, but again, our, our, uh, our uh, I think Brian might have mentioned it in the video, our, our mantra, our battle cry is to inspire not a Maryland passion for Maryland rye whiskey, not a, you know, a, 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 a domestic passion for Maryland. Our, our mantra is to inspire a global passion for Maryland rye whiskey. Um, so, you know, with that, we are in Japan, we're in, um, in the Philippines, we're in Canada, we are in Mexico, in the Caribbean, in the UK. Um, so again, our focus is domestically because, you know, this is, we're still a young brand. So we're not trying to, um, you know, um, spread our wings too wide um, because, uh, um, you know, we, we know that you need, focusing at home in your backyard is always where you want to get going and expand out from there. But we are available in the UK, in Europe. Um, so, um, you know, if you, if you need more information, please reach out to info at sagamorespirit.com. Um, and again, check us out on the website. Um, if you're, uh, we just launched our first national ad, uh, you know, commercial, um, which we're pretty excited about. We're not going on general, um, on, uh, you know, normal television where, you know, a lot of us nowadays are, you know, um, including myself, have devoted uh, all of our, you know, watching to streaming TV now. Um, so I no longer have cable. So uh, we'll be, be seeing commercials from us on Hulu, on, um, on Peacock, on Netflix, on um, YouTube. Um, so, uh, you know, that's something we're really excited about. We partnered up with um, the number one um, alternative bluegrass uh, band in the country um, called Gangsta Grass. So they're a mix of uh, bluegrass and hip hop. Um, really cool band um, who uh, we feature in the video, a song that they came up specifically for Sagamore Rye Whiskey. Um, so uh, hopefully you, you see that um, hit your uh, streaming TV uh, in the near future. Um, so uh, I think that's all that I uh, had to get across. If there's uh, no other questions, um, you know, thank you everyone for, for joining. Thank you for, um, you know, listening to uh, a little bit more about who we are at Sagamore Spirit. And again, please check us out on sagamorespirit.com. Follow us on Instagram at Sagamore Spirit um, for all of Instagram, Facebook, YouTube. Um, uh, you know, we, uh, we're very heavily, um, uh, you know, uh, into uh, social media and making sure our following knows about our new products. Sign up for our Whiskey Thieves, which is our kind of our internal club um, that gets all, you know, breaking news, new releases, distillery only releases. And you can uh, go to sagamorespirit.com and find the Whiskey Thieves section for that. Um, and sign up and, you know, you get, you know, it's nothing that is overbearing. You get a, an email once a month just with new things coming up and new exciting stuff. Um, uh, and uh, yeah, that's about it. Again, my name is Jack Shute from Sagamore Spirit, Director of Sales. Um, if there's no other questions, um, we will uh, call it a call. Uh, happy Saturday. I hope everyone has a great weekend um, wherever you are in the world. And, uh, and, uh, and I look forward to uh, um, talking to you more on BCB if, if, uh, if it allows us to. And be safe out there, stay clean, um, and hopefully we all get through this, um, you know, unscathed and healthy and, uh, you know, better than we went in. So thank you, everyone. Um, good luck out there and be safe. Bring it in, y'all. Get a sip of the rye.